When mothers send their beloved children into exile without knowing if they will ever see them again, there must be something wrong in Tibet. Even if the Chinese firmly insist that they have brought freedom and prosperity to this country. Lhasa, the capital of Tibet, in December 1999. For 40 years, the Patala Palace has been waiting for the Dalai Lama's return. The religious leader was one of the first to flee from the bloody Chinese invasion in 1959. Since then, more than 100,000 Tibetans have followed him over the Himalayas into exile in India. Today, many refugees are children. Impoverished parents cannot afford school fees. The tuition is too high. It is an effective tactic by the Chinese to break the people's resistance. A people without education is easier to rule, and a child without a future cannot carry on its ancient culture. In order to prevent the Tibetan culture from fading, His Holiness and his sister have created an educational system that allows Tibetans to study in India. More than 400 children cross the Himalayas each year in the hope of receiving a better education in exile. I'm Pema, I'm Tibetan, and I'm going to the pass on the border between Nepal and Tibet to help my friend. He brings children and uh, some other adults from Tibet. And uh, it is very dangerous because uh, of the police. So we made an appointment where we're going to meet. I know these places because I came from Tibet six years ago by walking for 22 days. So that's why I'm going. We accompany Pema on his search for his friend and the children. <laughs> on the third day of our ascent, we meet a group of drakpas, Tibetan nomadic traders. I don't wish any of those children get a frozen hand or feet, feet, any not even a finger. So I have to go quickly and help them.
Pema burns the colorful prayer flags in the fire. May the wind carry them to Tibet so that the refugees can find their way through the snow and the fog. The higher we get, the thinner the air. The thinner the air, the more difficult it is to go even higher. They arrive earlier than we expected. Fortunately, none of the refugees have frostbite, but they are exhausted, half-starved, and they urgently need water. When we meet them just below the pass, they have already been walking for 10 days. <laughs> Every year, some children are left behind in the snow, perishing from exhaustion and the cold. Often, frostbite takes its toll and limbs have to be amputated. The price Tibet's children have to pay is high. guide brought the group safely through the snow, although he became seriously ill on the way. He asks us not to reveal his face. If recognized, he would not be able to return to Tibet. You okay? Okay. Prima. Oh, jump. Kali <laughs>
Tapi pemain yang sih sudah sukses, kerja kan? Bukan itu tak sopan jaga serdo, sila. Cakap mana? Cakap yang nak jual lap gulu? Angin kelijik gun, jangan tak nombat es ya cak tapi, tapi kendiri yang sih sukses tu, si. Tang mana tang yang jauh musik itu apa mampu cikur lo? So, ini. あ、パチャなんや。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ。うわ
We knock on the door of a Sherpa's hut. After a 16-hour march, the children need something to eat. We have already exhausted all of our supplies. If we want to stay here, we can stay. Lutsunu The Sherpa's hut is too small for all the refugees to stay overnight. So the Sherpa and Pema take the children to a nearby monastery. It is located near a police station, but some of the monks are Tibetans. We hope that they won't betray us. Kusuma! 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 You must pretend this is nothing, okay? They can take the children. Oh, good. 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 Uh, we need something. <laughs> 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 After almost two weeks, the first night in a real bed. <laughs>
As we pass a painting of the green Tara, Pema writes a thank you on the stone. The monk's prayers seem to have been received. The children have been on their journey for 18 days now. Their guide is still very ill, and everyone is exhausted. It is Easter Sunday, and we decide to charter a small plane at the airport at Lugla. It is usually impossible for a refugee to afford such a plane ticket. What we are doing here is completely illegal, but we try to act as natural as possible. Fortunately, no one asks any questions. One last glance at the mountains they have crossed. From now on, the highest mountains in the world will separate these children from their parents who had to stay in Tibet. For adults, it is nearly impossible to start a new life in an overpopulated nation like India. Only when they have reached the reception center, a Tibetan refugee camp, will they finally be safe. Here they get a refugee pass, which allows them to continue their journey to Dharamsala in northern India. The children are mostly interested in the photos. <laughs> <laughs> After three days and three nights, the group finally arrives in Dharamsala, where the Dalai Lama welcomes and blesses the children. Of course, the um, children, especially to those younger ones, live from mother and they remain separately. It's very sad. Of course, very sad. But then, the, the parents themselves is it decide to send, to send out, because you see, inside the bed, <laughs> their life eventually spoil easily. <laughs> In the meantime, you see, it is our moral responsibility to look after them, and especially those young children. We see, provide them education and also facility as much as we can. The Tibetan children's village in Dharamsala. The children have finally arrived where their parents intended. Here they will grow up and go to school. Chetsen Pema, the youngest sister of the Dalai Lama, has dedicated her whole life to the children of Tibet. 
The Tibetans lovingly call her the mother. Almost 12,000 children are growing up in 11 different Tibetan children villages under her protection today. When you, uh, when you think of a mother who sends her, you know, five-year-old or six-year-old, you know, far away and also thinking she will never see that child, you know, for a long time or not at all. Uh, of course, it's not easy. It's a sacrifice, but sacrifice of love, I think. It's not rejection on the part of the parents to send their children. So it doesn't mean that they don't love their children. I think it's because they love their children too much that they want the best thing for their children. <laughs> The guide will go back to Tibet to bring over a new group of children. In order to protect him from the Chinese police, we never showed his face on camera. Before he leaves, he takes some pictures. He will take the photos to Tibet so that he can show the parents that their beloved ones made it safely into Indian exile. Yeah.